Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from Blue Sky, sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Carolyn Lowe, who is in Austin, Texas, a very warm Austin, Texas. Hi, thanks for having me, John. Yeah. And Carolyn is CEO and co-founder of the digital agency ROI Swift. And today we're going to talk about sales uh, structures and strategies within the context of digital marketing agencies. And, um, you know, when you think of a digital marketing agency, you think of just marketing, but just like everybody else, they've got to go out and find business as well. Right, Carolyn? That is absolutely true. <laughs> so what's different about when you're when you're in marketing, but you have to do sales, like what what are the challenges involved there? Well, that's a great question. First of all, you're not very good at it. Um, <laughs> I spent six and a half years in marketing at Dell, and I've been in the e-commerce world for many many years, and I've never typically been great at sales. So it's a whole new learning experience to understand and get it right. And I'll tell you, you know, we've made quite a few mistakes along the way. Um, we've used sales executive recruiters, neither one of those folks worked out. Um, and finally, I just went out to my entrepreneurs organization network, the EO network. And that's where I found the sort of the right sauce, the right formula for hiring for our agency, which we are just about to implement. Excellent. So what was it? What was it? So you went to the Entrepreneurs Association. So basically, you were looking for somebody who's more of a, a kind of a self starter. Is that what you're what you were looking for? Yeah, so I'm part of a network of, of founders and entrepreneurs called it's a global organization called mm -hmm. EO. And I went to that network and said, Hey, you know, those of you with 2030 salespeople in the similar type of business, uh, not competitive, Mm -hmm. What is your formula? And I realized I was looking for the wrong type of person. Um, really, with a digital agency, you're and you're just coming out. You really uh, need someone who's much more of a hunter than a farmer. And so, right. knowing exactly what you need, I see I see a lot of agencies and marketers make the make that mistake where they they hire a farmer and then they're mad when that farmer can't mm -hmm. hunt. And generally speaking, then they are selling to marketing people, right? Yes. So most of the folks we work with are CEOs and CMOs. Right. So it's very interesting. You're looking for what we found the model that we're going to is more of an SDR, which mm -hmm. works really well. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the company yeah. pitch book and um, the company pitch book basically provides all this investor data and all yeah. the VC funding. Mm -hmm. And that's the model that they use really to have like the SDR that qualifies and then they'll have, you know, you'll get passed over to an expert. Right. Yeah. To the subject matter expert. Yeah. But I, I guess though, in some ways though, it is obviously helping and going to help, uh, how you operate and deliver as a marketing agency, the more you understand the sales aspect of things. Definitely, definitely. And as we've sort of transitioned out of the farmer role and into the mm -hmm. hunter role, I've actually been doing it. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting. When we use a variety of tools, um, smaller companies, we, we use Zoom Info for database. We use mm -hmm. obviously LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So we employ a bunch of tools. We're actually starting some webinars in two weeks that are you know complimentary webinars to to help folks learn along the way about Amazon and Facebook and Google advertising. And so those have been some of the things that, um, that I found. It's also very different if you're a CEO to CEO reaching out versus a salesperson to a CEO. I think that's a very different conversation mm -hmm. and they have to navigate that conversation too. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think that's a that's a critical piece because if you can't if you can't kind of uh, present yourself as a as a, at least a business peer in some respect, it can be very difficult to make that to make that connection. So, what has changed with it? Do you think in the in the advice or the work that you do with your clients around marketing? What do you think the sales aspect has has informed that? Yeah, I think in, in some ways, the, the sales aspect has really helped us hone our message and who we want to mm -hmm. work with. Um, we don't want to work with Nike. Our, our core competency is businesses that are three to 30 million. So right. the sales process has really helped us define exactly like 
the Ikea is this, they own 93% of the 7% of the flat pack market. Mm -hmm. And we want to own 93% of the three to $30 million e-commerce right. brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so, so that's, um, so as you've, as you've, um, you know, gone and found salespeople and, and, and got your model together, it's meant that, uh, like you say, is you've had to look at your sales process and you've had to look at your target market. So you've got all that, it, you, you've really had to hone everything in a way that perhaps sometimes marketing organizations don't. That is true. And we've actually hired a great sales consultant team and we'll be using their sales assessment and uh, going and sending that person through Sandler and all of those things that a lot of times, you know, I came from Dell where we had a huge mm -hmm. sales organization sure. and, you know, in the digital agency, sometimes you have one or two salespeople. And so you need to get it right. So I think our other big learning was using outsourced sales training and sales assessments. Um, it was really going to help us get this, this higher right. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, uh, today, we have seen the lines between sales and marketing blurring anyway. Yes, very much so. Yes. And a lot of times we're seeing sales and marketing organizations join together and there's um, so much more collaboration and synergy that you need today more than ever um, mm -hmm. to move and, things along. And even salespeople themselves have to be kind of micro marketers in, in many respects. Yes, we do. So with our salesperson, what we do is we spend a whole day with them. We teach them the ins and outs of Facebook. We teach them the ins and outs of Amazon. We teach them the ins and outs of Google so that they can speak intelligently, right? There's nothing worse mm -hmm. than someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, reaching out to a right. CEO. I mean, that's your brand. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the face of the company. And you want to make sure that that person is, is presenting your brand as, as well as you would. Yeah, and I think that's something that sometimes organizations and marketing organizations overlook about the fact that the that the one of the one of the most important interfaces between your company and the market is your salesperson. And so if you're if marketing has one idea of how to present the company and sales presents it in a different way because there's not that there is not that collaboration, you're sending mixed messages. Absolutely. Yeah, we made sure that we've come up with overview decks and proposals and really processing and putting in processes for all of these things. This is what you do if it's this type of brand. This is what you do if it's this type of brand. Um, really doing much more sales enablement versus just, you know, letting them out to fly. And it's interesting because, you know, some people would say, oh, well, that all sounds like yeah, that's what you know, medium or big companies do. That's the kind of thing they do. But the fact is that you're not going to be successful at any size of business unless you go, unless you have a very good awareness of what your brand is, what your message is, where your target market is. And it needs to be understood by everybody, not just the salespeople, not just the marketing people, but everybody involved, right? Yes. I mean, that's a great point. A lot of times we've seen salespeople they can't recite the core values of the company or they don't know where they're going or they don't know what the one year revenue target is and they don't know how they fit into the big picture. So I think transparency across the organization is really important for salespeople to be successful too. I always feel like we don't want to sell anybody anything. We'll, we'll do audits of companies and we've told them not to hire us. Um, mm -hmm. We said, you're doing everything right. You don't need us. And that's, you know, we're not trying to just take money. So I think it's a lot easier when salespeople realize they're not trying to sell something. They're trying to help people. And a lot of people don't have that mentality. Like we don't want to take your money if we can't help you. Yeah. And I think exactly. And I think that builds trust, which is a fundamental. And obviously trust is an element that you want the brand to stand for. But also, you want your salespeople to have long-term relationships with customers. You want them to be referred into other people. You want them to get testimonials from customers. So trust is a massive part of that. Absolutely, yes. And in, in the situation, you yeah, no, yeah. and I'm just saying, in the example that you raised there is to say, if you say to somebody, listen, you're doing everything, there's nothing really we can do for you right now, I don't want to take your money, the chances are that that same company, if they come across somebody else who needs digital marketing help or whatever, they'll say, well, listen, we didn't use this company because they said we didn't need to, but they might be a good fit for you. And they're more likely to refer you because they trust you now. Yes. We had a very big golf shirt brand. We did that for them. We said, mm -hmm. hey, your, your audit score is an A. 
the only two things we see, they're pretty minor. Just go ahead and do these two things. And there's nothing we would do differently. Your agency in LA is doing a great job. And so they still refer business to us. Right, right. And so, I mean, it, it's such an important point to underline is that that transparency and that honesty, you know, it, it pays back in, 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 um, in spades, obviously. Yeah. Um, so what were, what are some of the other areas that you have seen where maybe sales and marketing is starting to collaborate more or the lines are blurring and how would you advise sales and marketing people to interact and maybe collaborate more better together? Yes, that's a great, I think there's a lot of tools, many more tools now than there were, you know, five Mm -hmm. or six years ago when I was at, when I was at Dell, gosh, I left Dell in 2006 and sales and marketing were like two different islands, you know, they Mm -hmm. didn't collaborate as much as they needed to. And, um, and I don't feel like the sales force was ever quite as, as knowledgeable and trained as they could have been. So I'm seeing the convergence of salespeople becoming marketers and marketers becoming salespeople. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of our, our folks that run our Facebook ads and run our Amazon really jumping in on those sales calls and being that subject matter expert. And, and we just look so much better when we've got someone on the phone who can answer those questions versus, Oh, let me go find out. Oh, I don't know. You know, yeah. it doesn't present a, a great front there. So we're seeing a lot more collaboration on the, even on the selling side. And I think that really is, I'm, th- I'm glad you raised that because I think that really is a key going forward is that is this idea of kind of team selling and bringing in, brokering in the right resources at the right time. Uh, because generally speaking, if you're in a B2B world <clears throat> nowadays, you're not very often selling to one person. They may, there may be one person who's a decision maker, but there's other people involved in, in the sales process. So in many ways, it stands to reason that you would involve other people on your side. Yes, yes. I mean, it's nice. I do like our, our businesses are, you know, three to 30 or 50 million. Mm-hmm. So it's easier than selling to a Fidelity. Like when I was at Dell and we were trying to sell mm-hmm. into Fidelity, that would be, you know, 50 people in a room and uh, nobody could agree on anything. So... Yeah, yeah, but still, even at the size of companies, you're still likely to have, um, you know, a couple of other people get involved and can derail a sales process very easily, especially when somebody comes in at the end. Definitely, definitely. In our leadership, we do leadership offsites quarterly, and and one of the things that we just um, we realize is that time kills all deals. So. Mm-hmm. We don't want the marketing folks to slow down the deal and we don't want the sales folks to slow down the deal because as you know, um, a lead and a lead that goes on and like, like you said in your podcast a couple of weeks ago that sits on the books because it looks good. Yeah, (laughs) Um, exactly. (laughs) We'd rather a a yes is as good as a no and a no is as good as a yes. We just want, you know, um, folks that want to join us and want to let us help them or or not. So, uh, yeah, we, we are the same way. Like if we, we want to take away those sort of long sales cycles, our, our sales cycles are sometimes about 20 days, which is pretty short. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. And, and it's good. And that's a good discipline. And that takes a, and it, and it takes a little bit of uh, of fortitude and nerve to do that because it, it does mean that you probably have less in your pipeline than maybe some other companies, but maybe your, your conversion rates are so much higher and you're, because you're targeting the right people. But as I, as you would have referred to the um, podcast is, is, yeah, sometimes it's just that comfort of having a lot in your pipeline, even when you know it's not real. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we've also found, you know, quality over quantity. Yeah. We've used some services that mm-hmm. outbound and they just, they don't get it right. Um, no. And we've used some ones that plug into LinkedIn Sales Navigator and uh, it's just not worth the brand. So I, I feel like sales is something that you need to own internally. Um, that person's going to be far more passionate. And I, I just don't believe in outsourcing sales. That may not be a popular view, but I feel like especially as it's our brand and as mm-hmm. an agency, our brand is our people. So, Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's critical of a company like yours for, um, for that. And I, and I think it's, it's in many ways, it's, it, it is the best way to do it because as I said, um, they are the, they are the sharp end of the spear often when it comes to being in the marketplace. And if they're not presenting the brand properly, then, um, then you end up in the situation you just talked about. You can use outsource companies, but they don't bring you the right customers. So this has been great. Uh, we're nearly up against the end of our time here, Karen. So um, all of Karen's information, company information will be in her contributor bio. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your organization. 
Sure. Uh, ROI Swift was formed five years ago to help these emerging brands grow profitably so that you have more choices other than Coke and Pepsi. Um, and we primarily focus on paid social and paid search, Amazon, and we're also a uh, email marketing partner. So we're based in Austin. We're a small team of 10 and we are all A players. You don't um, hire the A team and get the B team. So everybody mm -hmm. here does the work. We, we don't have a secret team offshore in some other country. And, and that's, we just feel like that's the best way to do business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this was fascinating. And I think uh, a lot of great information for people. Uh, hey, everybody at the end of the day is in sales. And most and nowadays, pretty much everybody's in marketing, too. There's an awful lot of crossover. <laughs> All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview real soon. That was great. Thank you, Carolyn. That was great. Thank you. Did I? Was yeah, no, it was great. It was really interesting. Short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I do about 50 minutes, but it's uh, it's perfect. You get some okay. good insights. Yeah. So this will well, be about this will be about 10 days. We'll send you the link and everything. And, okay, great. Uh, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I really yeah. have enjoyed getting to know you through your previous guests and your podcast. And I was uh, honored to be among the uh, the guests. Yeah, no, it's great. And I said it uh, some great insights in, in this. So I really thank you for that. Okay. Well, right. enjoy. Enjoy the yeah. beaches. Hopefully the beaches open up soon. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Okay. Bye-bye.